Greetings, greetings, greetings. You're now tuning in 13 Signs Astrology .com. My name is Ron Potep L. Your master of ceremony on this particular segment. And don't forget the dot com because this sign is very important. I use this sign to represent my spiritual gap. My spiritual gap, my spiritual glock that, you know, that sometime I might have to use when a particular person gets out of line. Most people that try to get out of line when it comes to uh, spiritual cats are people that are, that don't have a lot of understanding. People that are ignorant and people that are physical to a point where they're like, if you're so spiritual, you got all these powers, let's see if you're gonna stop this. I'm gonna pull up this pistol and we'll see if you're gonna stop, can you stop a bullet? You see what I'm saying? You saying you got all these powers, can you stop a bullet, nigga? Like, nigga, I'm from the hood. I done heard that over and over again. You see, and that's why I make videos like this and I address my particular audience like this because I know I have a background that I, you know what I'm saying? Like, I was affiliated with people that are from the streets. I mean, just like any other so-called poor black person growing up, I grew up under the same conditions. It's nothing to brag about. But when you get into this such high level information sometimes you know you got to kind of like shape shift and come down and address i guess you could say the grimy and the filthy of the population because there's really no difference from the bottom and the top you see you can either be dirt poor or you could be filthy rich either way you dirty you feel me because anybody that makes it up to being filthy rich then did a lot of dirty grimy ass shit to get there and done lived in situations like they was dirt poor because people think filthy rich or being rich and all of that is going to solve all your problems. It's not going to solve all your problems. And you're going to still have to live a outside of the box type of lifestyle if you want to be rich. Just like being poor. Some people make poverty choices and choose to be homeless. And you have to live under certain conditions if you choose that lifestyle. Just like there are certain advantages to that lifestyle. You see, so I address all crowds because I done walked many shoes. I done played many roles. I'm a lifetime actor. So on this particular episode, I'm going to call this nigga, you don't know shit. Like, nigga, tell me something I don't know. That's what I'm going to call this particular episode because I'm addressing that particular crowd. You see, knowledge really is nothing but entertainment. The, the delivery of knowledge, the delivery of knowledge is nothing but entertainment. Why? Because knowledge is always changing. What you know, when you're talking about some tell me something I don't know, see what you gotta fail to realize is I could put you into an environment everything you know means jack diddly shit in this particular environment. So you have to literally, I can make you forget everything that you know if I put you into a certain environment. See, in some environments and in some, I guess, schools and certain circles that we draw in metaphysics, we want you to forget everything that you knew. Throw all of that shit out the window. Forget everything. Because they say, well, when you meditate, you're supposed to remember. Well, you can't remember the inner workings of consciousness if you're still caught up into the outer world, the exterior world. If you still caught up in what's called out formation. So you can't get into information if you still caught up in the out formation because information shapes and molds out formation. See out formation, out formation is basically the product of information or intel. You see out formation is composed of things that work in the inner realm. So say, for instance, the knowledge of how to build a house, that's out formation because you're building something that the world will see, physical. But the knowledge to know how to do that is information. So you can see the house, that's out formation. But what it takes to get there from point A to Z, that's information. That's what I'm saying. The person that has that knowledge, the architect or the project manager or the person that knows how to go from point A to Z to get there, that's information. So 
that's the first thing you got to remember. Knowledge is enter is nothing but mere entertainment on the particular realm that you're at because it's helping you to get a better understanding of yourself to enter. You notice you see when you when you dissect the word entertainment is to go within. So to truly entertain someone, you have to be able to touch a spot within their heart. That's why people cry for their favorite singer. Something happens to them, and people are in joy, and people hate even when certain people that they see are in front of them. It, they feel something inner because that person is such a good entertainer, or to a magician that they penetrate an inner aspect of that person's being. So I could tell you a lot of shit you don't know. Believe that, but at the end of the day, how you how you gonna use it to benefit you? It's just just something good to listen to while you smoking a nice blunt. So that's why I decided to kind of like dumb down a little bit. If you notice on these videos, these videos I've been coming with, out with lately, it's because people, you know, thinking Ram Hotep's head is always in the clouds and it's you know all these imaginations and imagery and all that shit. But all of that shit. You know, to get into the, the clouds, you have to first have your feet on the ground. If you want to learn how to fly, you got to be able to take off. You got to have a good launching pad. See, I have a launching pad. I have a foundation. I was rooted in military science and training and a lot of mundane stuff that you guys can never do. I never survived in nature. I was a Boy Scout. Just different shit that, you know, most people laugh at. So I'm not just some geek up here. Like, um, hey, my name is Plain Dexter. I'm going to tell you some things you didn't know just to sound so smart. Like, nah, man. This is a, a art, a science, and a movement. I'll forget that. See, I'm going to tell you something you don't know. One of my first points. One of my first points, what you didn't know is, is that the next superpower is going to be ran by extraterrestrial civilization. Just like America was the world superpower, and that was, you know, the power that the world bound to, and everybody look at America, or even, you know, um, other places, like in certain parts of Europe, and they look at these places, and they like, these are the next superpower, or these are the world superpowers. Well, the next world superpower is already, in, they're already constructing it, is an extraterrestrial civilization that you won't even know about, but they're going to run everything. And that they're inviting certain people too. And they've been working on this since Elvis. That's the next thing I can tell you. See, when Elvis faked his death, <laughs> he laid out the blueprint for what entertainers must do to get out of essentially the hell that they put you in, when they put you into, when they induct you into this music business thing. And the entertainers link into, the reason why I'm bringing this up is because the entertainers link into this new economy that's coming or that's already here really because they'll be the faces that you see to represent this new world or this new economy and I know a lot of people are of course are not gonna like this because they feel like well what about you the stuff that you're teaching what about my children and I mean they feel like they're they don't have to go to college now and they don't have to go to school to get knowledge again remember I said it's all relative but they don't have to go to school to get knowledge because they sitting here hearing this stuff that you talking about. Now they gonna want to all run and just go be entertainers so they could be the face of this new economy. But what you guys fail to realize is, is that it's this new economy is so big and there's so much money and wealth involved in it that it's probably not enough people that's gonna be qualified to even make it to be to rep to be the face of this new economy. So you'll still have the mundane jobs and secular jobs. I mean, I'll tell children like this, if you don't want to basically give up everything, I mean, pretty much everything in your current life, then you probably wouldn't want to be in, inducted into this circle that I'm speaking of because you have to give up everything in your current, you have to look at it like that. You may get it all back at, at some point, but you have to give up everything in your current life to be inducted into this new circle. So these entertainers, um, they're going to represent kind of like the mortals, the immortals, because the immortals were really, truly the ones that ran everything back in the times of Atlantis. See, all of this is nothing new that I'm talking about. This new economy and this new world is coming. This is how Atlantis was ran. The extraterrestrials ran everything then. So really what's happening is that it's just all being reintroduced. This economy is going to have more money, more power, more juice, because they're going to work with the technology arena. I've been dreaming about this for a minute, like, and going into lucid states and visiting this economy, and I've already seen a lot, a lot of people that are in positions right now, they're going to be, they're going to graduate. I can even tell you certain people, uh, like, your role in this new economy that I'm seeing. 
the economics is the key. See what's going on with the World Cup. This is deep because I ain't even did the video on this yet, but I make this point. But what's going on with the World Cup is, is that this is qualifying the different nations of what's going to be your tier or your ranking in this new economy that is totally up under control of extraterrestrials. But I'll do a video on that at another time when I talk about FIFA, the FIFA World Cup, and just a lot of stuff. How that's even changing. The federation of the World Cup is even changing. So, so yeah, that's, I mean, that's one aspect a lot of people don't realize is happening right before your eyes. A lot of people that may be in the entertainment world don't even realize it's happening because it's a secret within a secret. This is a secret society within a secret society. The secret societies, all of them that you know about, the known ones and some of the unknown ones will be up under this particular order. And this is going to be the order that runs the world. It's not even going to be visible. You won't even be able to find the headquarters to go to it, to meet with the higher-ups. None of that. If you, Your only hope in getting into this order is through understanding how they communicate and by being able to follow good instructions and being able to listen. See, there's some orders that you get in that they don't ever talk to you. There's never... This is how this order is going to work. There's never an initiation. There's never a time when they come to you and they're like, yo, okay, we need you to do this, that, that. You have everything is done through subliminal messages and picking up on these messages to where you'll never speak to anybody. The order is not predicated upon speaking, going to a place to meet. It's simply a group of people that initiate a person by symbols. But you ain't ready for that. Because you think you know everything, right? <laughs> See, another thing is, is that the medical, the way the medical room is going to work in this new world. So I can tell you a lot of shit you don't know. you like, tell me something I don't know. Niggas in the hood, I always going to say that, right? So like the medical industry, you notice that's changing. This Obamacare, they saying everybody got to sign up for this health care tax. See, all of that's tying into, they want to basically be able to get to the point where they could just, you go to the doctor and they can pretty much cure anything. They already really have the technology to do this, but they want to offer it to everybody. But they want to monopolize on it. This, this secret world order wants to monopolize on it. And a lot of people are bucking it because, see, the concept of, like, capitalism and free enterprise kind of goes against how this order wants to run. Because this order is going to be based on a percentages of, like, a tax almost. Like the Obamacare thing. See, people don't feel to realize you can opt out of the Obamacare thing. You don't have to sign up, but you have to pay a tax, a certain percentage, a lot of times. If you're involved in that circle, again, you don't have to pay anything if you're involved in that circle. So everything's based on being a part of a certain order, a certain circle. You, you could just pay a percentage, but this new thing that they're going to have, once you sign, see, that's all like a prelude to this new order, though. So once they get enough people to sign up for the Obamacare, then they'll introduce the fact of if you have a heart trouble, they can just give you a totally new heart that's mechanical and computerized, but it's perfect. And it's organic, a computerized heart that's like a still an organ. It still looks like an organ. And how they came up with this technology is that they was going around. A lot of people didn't realize this, but they recruited a bunch of hoes. So, yep, hoes. And was targeting rich people, people that were geniuses and had tennis players like Tiger Woods. They could have targeted him probably. One of them chicks he was messing with could have been a hoe. You feel me? But Tiger Woods didn't get the game, so, you know. And... When he, when he sleep, you know, she fuck you real good at night, you sleep, and then they do shit to you. You feel me? They'll take your heart from you. Put in a new, I mean, all kind of shit, depending on what kind of drugs I was doing. You might wake up, goddamn it, and got a new heart, a different heart. She could have been an extraterrestrial that they slipped in there. That was a part of the order. That's already got all kind of mechanical parts and all of that in her. And she could have took your organs from you. Or they taking people's DNA and samples of their DNA when they locking them up and shit. And then they send it out to somewhere in the middle of nowhere. And they're doing reproduction and cloning you. And then they got this clone somewhere chilling just in case you fuck up. Because you may be somebody important. And you fuck up, they could just slip that clone in. But this is going to become, this type of medical technology is going to become the norm. To where people aren't, they don't really want people to die anymore. They want to get the world up under control. This is when I talk about unlimited progress, actually, even though it sounds real sinister. But they want to get the world to a point where it's, like, perfect. Nobody dies. People work for 100 years. As much money as they can get out of you, it's still going to be the same system set up where, you know, there's a ruling class and the elite class. But the elite class is trying to redesign things to make everything more equal. And the elite class is changing. It's becoming more extraterrestrial-based than what it was. 
So yeah, it's a lot of shit out there <laughs> going on that most people don't know about. A lot of shit going on. See, people, they, they want to talk about blood sacrifice. I'm going to talk about that, and then I'll shut it down. See, what you don't know is, is that blood sacrifice does not have to be the norm. And I want to do a whole video on this, but I'm just bringing it up now because in this new world that they're bringing out, there's not going to be any blood sacrifice. Blood sacrifice only happens in a, more of a capitalistic society in a perfectly ran economy. Nobody needs to get sacrificed because everybody's producing. See, people get sacrificed when they, there's dead weight, basically. That's what a sacrifice essentially is, no matter how you look at it. And people get mad and they're like, man, these rappers doing these sacrifices. Well, how you know it's the rappers doing the sacrifices? How you know it's not the people in the rappers' families doing the sacrifices because they were stealing off of the rappers and now they can't pay back this money that they were stealing off of the rappers and so now they got to go and sacrifice people's family members. See, I tell the truth. I don't give a fuck. Straight up. I could do a whole video talking about sacrifice and how it's done economically, I'm saying. The economics behind it. You see, so I'm just bringing that up because in a perfect economy, in a perfect world, you don't need it to sacrifice anybody. And it's going to have to be resource based because that's the only way that something like that's going to work. Because it has to be a system economy. Economics is based on checks and balances, accounting, accounting one on one. And when you have a resource based economy, the books stay balanced. As long as you don't loan out more money than what your resources cost for. See, some economies are contract-based. Like right now, a lot of the world economies are contract-based. So when I do my video on the World Cup, because it's coming real soon, it'll all kind of like balance out what I'm talking about here in my video on the World Cup, because that's going to tell you about the world economics. And the World Cup is predicated upon global economics. Economics is based upon designing a structure and a blueprint that masses and groups of people can live up under. And whoever designs the best blueprint and the best structure is essentially the ruling class or ruling party. And the, this ET group that I'm telling you about have already designed this perfect economy and are already implementing it and are just about maybe even a few days away from completing it. And then they're going to introduce it. They're going to spend a few more years after they complete the plan, the planning aspect, the behind the scenes aspect. Let's just put it that way. They're going to spend more, a few more years introducing it to you. So. I just told you some shit that you didn't know. So now, you know. Knowledge is power. You can your, your, your mind is so powerful. The stuff you can do. You can go within yourself and within your mind. I bet you didn't know this. And you can gain more than 10% control of your brain. They making a movie about this it's called Lucy. But you can do this in meditation though. I knew this before the movie. I ain't even seen the movie or the previews or whatever. I seen the previews, but I knew this before the previews came out. You can control through meditation and through your awakening. You have to become awakened first. Then once you go back into your meditation, you can control so much, like 40% of your brain, to the point where you can control how, what events happen to you. See, that's real control, that's real power. Well, just imagine if you had that power alone, to where you could control people that you need to attract into your life. See, it's about having mental brain power. If you have more control over your mind than another person has over their mind, then guess what, you can control them. By default, you only have to focus on, I'm gonna control people. So let me see if I can have more control over my, my wife so I can get more control over her. So let me get more control over my mind so I can control her. I mean, if that's your motivation, I mean, so be it. But at the end of the day, it is what it is. The principle that I'm teaching here is that through meditation and through your awakening, first you have to learn how to quiet the mind. And you can go so deep into the mind that you can send out so, much, so many positive aspirations, so many positive thoughts, positive objects, mental, basically mental creations that you create that you can begin to 
attract these things back into your reality and begin to call events into existence in your reality and you can control people you can control the very atoms that make up people that make up the realm because controlling the realm is basically controlling the atoms like if you want to control the realm mentally see atoms respond to our mind you got to get into this book um, I'm going to do a video on books real soon too no, I keep saying that but I promise you it's coming it's coming just be patient but I'm going to do a video on how to control the realm like, I mean, I'm going to do a video on those books, excuse me, in one of those books. Um, it's called The Holographic Universe, but it's, no, it's called The Purposeful Universe. The Purposeful Universe. And that's a real good book, because in that book, it talks about that, how your thought forms can control atoms and create realities. You can design realities. Really learning sacred geometry is how you do it. Because certain sacred geometrical shapes, you can make atoms into certain geometrical shapes. And those certain geometrical shapes correspond to certain realities. So you can begin to, through focusing and dreaming and imagination, you can begin to shape a reality based on knowing certain geometrical shapes and numbers and creating a communication that's nonverbal with your reality. This is how you control it. You communicate with the reality without speaking to it. You have to understand the law of correspondence. Study that law in and out. You notice in the matrix, he's seen a lot of numbers. That was the reality. He was learning how to control it. That's why every time they went to the matrix, they'd see the numbers first because they was coming in as masters. Then they seen the physical reality, the fake reality. It was really an illusion the matrix was, but they would see the numbers as they was going in. Sometimes they may manifest as shapes. Some people see numbers. Some people see shapes. It's all the same. So that's some shit that you didn't know. If you want to see some shit that you ain't never seen, you need to get into that state that I'm talking about. You need to achieve your awakening. What is your awakening? Your awakening is when you have total control over your mind. You've learned how to quiet your mind to a point where you totally control it. Totally. And then once you do that, you can begin now to pull things from the external world from within. Remember, you got to have information to shape the outer world. So you can begin to take and pull things from the external world. And you can snapshot and record those images and through the process of mental alchemy you can reshape the things that are in the outer that you see right now your reality in the outer world you can take and reconstruct that and reshape that based upon what you have around you right now and create a new world for yourself I'll give you an example because I have to because it's a very abstract concept then I'll shut down say for instance I like to use this example that I've been through and I've really been through this. Say, for instance, one night, everything's going bad for you. You ain't got nowhere to sleep. You out there on the streets and shit. Filthy. <laughs> Dirty. But you like, man, I ain't giving up. So you lay down, you lay back, and you, you find somewhere in the woods to crash, whatever. You get to looking up at the trees. And you get to looking at the end, how the trees are designed and the architecture behind the forest. And you like, imagine if this was like a home or I could design a home like this. How much would it be worth if I could design like a tree house that was immaculate? How much would it be worth? A million dollars, two million dollars, who knows? And you like looking at it like, even though I'm dirt poor, I'm enjoying the benefits of this million dollar home right now. And if you could get, begin to believe that and take yourself into a mental meditation within that, you can wake up the next day and be in a million dollar home. You can wake up the next day like magic and be in a million dollar home because you're using things in your world right now to, that corresponds with what you really want in a million dollar home. So you're looking at the beauty. See, million dollar homes are beautiful. So you look at the beauty of nature. The sweet smells. Million dollar homes, I hope they smell good. Unless the person is filthy rich. They're filthy fucking rich and they stink. You ever notice filthy rich people, like even go up to Europe and shit, it's kind of like it stink. They say it stink or it's musty or, you know, certain place. Even in Africa, they say African stink. That's pheromones. Everybody has different pheromones. And I think that, um, you know, I think that men and women, we don't notice it, but we're sexually attracted. See, most rich people are very sexual. <laughs> We're sexually attracted to pheromones. Cologne don't make you attracted to nobody. It's 
the pheromone sexually. Sweet smell smell good in the exterior world, in the outer world, but with inner on the inner world, you may not even realize it. it turns you on. The pheromones. So that's what you smell. So a lot of rich people they know they understand this type of shit. So they walk around, you know. I'm I'm, I'm serious. You think I'm lying? I've been around rich people. One of my teachers, he was pretty well off. They taught me, white guy. To walk around, he ain't wear no cologne, said he ain't wear no deodorant months. And I'm not saying whether it's cool or not. I know how to dress on the occasion. So I could be a hippie or I could be a preppy. As far as me. But um, white guy, then how he said he used to walk around with no cologne or nothing, have women. I used to watch women, was just used to be all over him. It's the confidence, man, that you got in yourself too. It has a lot to do with that, but but you can take that reality either way and shape and mold it to what you want to see for yourself. So never let you got to be like water. Remember Bruce Lee taught us that water takes on the, the shape of the container. Human beings are like water. This is what a shapeshifter is it's like water. You take on the shape of the very container that you're in. The environment and you use the knowledge of that environment to master that environment. So I hope I told you something that you didn't know. And maybe you could take some of the shit that you didn't know and apply it to what you do know. And in the reality that you are in so you could make it better. Make a new reality for yourself. So I'm going to get up out of here. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Happy games. Happy independence. Till we meet again. Namaste. Wadu. Hotep.